Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at exempt transactions under the Securities Act of 1933. I double underline transaction to, differ to differentiate transaction from exempt securities. Exempt securities, it means you don't have to take them through the SEC approval process. No, the securities themselves don't have to go through it. Here, we're going to be discussing transactions because of the nature of the transaction. You don't have to go through the SEC 1933 Act because the way the security is structured. And specifically, we're going to be looking at R Rule 147, Regulation D, A. And obviously, if you sell your own stock, you don't have to go through the through the SEC as long as you own less than 10% of the company. Now, this topic is covered on the CPA exam. Therefore, if you are studying for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you visit farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course, whether you are taking Becker, Roger, Gleam, Wiley, or any other review course. I can be a useful addition. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA score by explaining the material differently. No better, no less. Just let's say differently. I can be that supplement. When your CPA review course does not explain something uh, the way you would like, maybe you want to try my explanation. And what about you try for a month to find out whether it's a good system for you or not? If it's not, you cancel, you lost a month. The potential gain is passing the exam. I think it's a fair risk to take. And if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have... Uh, courses and resources uh, for other topics as well, please check out my website, connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so, and you can review my LinkedIn recommendation. People that used my system to pass the exam, like this recording, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So I'm going to go over this list, starting with rule 147, and everything that I'm going to be saying here, maybe if I don't mention it explicitly it's considered an exempt transaction simply put you don't have to go through the trans through the through the process that the sec wants you to do before you before you sell securities which is have a prospectus and filing statements so on and so forth so rule 147 and rule 147 when you when you think of rule 147 think of intrastate sale like you are in pennsylvania i'm in pennsylvania and i'm dealing everything within the state so it govern intra not inter Inter, it means between state. Here we're looking at intra. Intra, it means within the state, within the state itself. So the issuer first will have to be located inside the state, for example, Pennsylvania. The old securities are sold to residents in the state, are sold to residents in Pennsylvania. So the, the, the people who are financing the company are residents of the state. 80% of the proceeds are used in the state to expand the business. 80% of the assets are located in the states. 80% of the revenue is generated within the state. So notice, it, it makes sense that you're operating in the state, therefore, you know, you, you, because think about it, the SEC is a federal regulation. Federal means it applies to all state. If you are operating within your state, the SEC is not concerned with you because it's concerned with interstate transaction, interstate commerce. So restriction of security for six months for non-residents. So simply put, if, if a person in Pennsylvania purchased that securities, they have to hold it for six months before they can sell it to a non-resident, to a non-resident. Mass advertising is prohibited. And we have rule 147. The issuer does not have to be a resident of the state. So somebody outside the state can sell it if, if they go under rule 147a but still when you buy it you have to hold the securities for six months like rule 147 so this is one transaction just make sure you know what rule 147 i think it makes sense just remember if you buy it you have to hold it for six months before you before you sell it to a non-resident non-resident of your state now regulation d when you think of regulation d think of private placement or private offering in contrast in contrast to public because remember the sec go governs the, the main the main objective of 1933 is initial public offering when you sell to the public well regulation d what if you don't want to sell to the public you want to sell to people that you know people that you are familiar with it's a private placement okay so regulation d it govern private placement exemptions so what it does, it provides exemptions. If, if, if you're a small issuance, a small company, what you do is you go under Regulation D, um, and specifically you will follow Rule 504 and 
504 and 506 to be exempt. There is no more. They used to have a rule 505. Make sure if you saw that one, cross it out of the answers. Okay. And when it comes to regulation D, uh, they, they differentiate between two type of investors and you have to be familiar with them. A group of investors we can call accredited investors and accredited, simply put, they are high net worth client. And simply put, as of today, their net worth has to be 1 million and exclude, excluding their home value. And by the way, hedge funds, mutual fund, banks, insurance companies, they're considered institutional investors. And we have uncredited investors. Simply put, they are not accredited. That, that's what it means. And if they are not accredited, it means we have to furnish them with financial information about the issuer, the business, annual reports, and infor more information. Why? Because they are not accredited. Okay, they are in, like think of it they are at a disadvantage therefore we have to give them more information accredited the assumption is they know what they're doing they have lawyers accountant cfas that they're, they're going to consult with that's the assumption here okay some general rules rules about regulation d before we go into specific if you buy the stock you have to keep it for one year there's something called the bad actors rule or the bad actors disqualification so look if someone with the issuer Simply put, if someone is affiliated with the issuer, is considered a covered person. A covered person, if someone that tried to defraud uh, the SEC or other investors in the past, they have been convicted of securities fraud within the past five years, then the issuer cannot use Regulation D. Simply put, then you cannot use Regulation D. Then you have you, you cannot use this exemption from filing. Therefore, you have to go through the whole process, which is costly and and, and time consuming. And this bad actor rule would apply later on we'll see regulation a it applies also to regulation a you have to inform the sec within 15 days of the first offering if you're going through a regulation d and again under regulation d we have two parts 504 and 506 starting with 504 under 504 you can sell securities up to five million dollars during a 12-month period it's considered a small amount to any number and type of purchaser, whether that purchaser is accredited or unaccredited. Simply put, it's like open season. You can buy, you can sell $5 million worth of securities to anyone, okay? So, but remember, this is a private placement and they need to, the person that's buying need to understand it's buy as is. It's, it's you know, buyer be aware. If, you, if you're buying bad product, it's your problem. The SEC is not going to, it's not looking over this to make, to make sure everything is complete. So under those circumstances, registration is not required. The issuer loves it. The issuer does not need to provide any specific financial information. Obviously, as I told you, you must notify the SEC of the sale and there's no restriction. If you buy the sale, you can resell them. You can do whatever you want to. And obviously, you can carry mass solicitation because you can target any type of creditor. So this is under Rule 504, again, Regulation D. Now, under Rule 506, we're still working under Regulation D. There's no dollar limit in contrast to Rule 504. Remember rule 504, we said you can issue up to 5 million within 12 months. Here you have no limit. You can issue as much as you want. Advertisement by the issuer is only, you can only target accredited investors here. Okay, you can only target accredited investors. Now, can you have unaccredited investors? Yes, you can. You can have up to 35 of unaccredited investors, but those unaccredited investors must be they add a word to them, sophisticated. It means they have knowledge, experience, they understand the risk that they're getting into. We don't have to worry exactly how yeah, we'll, we're going to come, come come to that conclusion. It's not our concern, but you need to know they can be they can be unaccredited, but considered sophisticated. They have knowledge, they are comfortable with what they're doing. Okay. However, if you have one unaccredited, unaccredited investor, only one, then you have to furnish audited financial statements for everyone. So obviously, if you're going to go under Rule 506 and you're trying to avoid this, you don't sell to any unaccredited investor. Okay, and the issuer must take reasonable care not to be selling to an underwriter because the, these guys they try to resell. That's that's not what they're trying to do. You're trying to sell to investors. That's that's the purpose directly to the investors. Uh, Regulation A, another. Uh, it's not really an exemption, but it's simplified offering. It's not, it's, not, it's not considered an exemption. Simplified means they make it easier for you to raise money. It permits certain issuers to, to offer up to 50 million of securities in a 12 month period without filing formal registration statement and prospectus. It doesn't mean you don't, you don't have to file anything. You're gonna have to file something, but that's not, not as comprehensive and, um, and tedious 
as registration statements and pros prospectus. There is no restriction on resale and general solicitation is allowed for these type of transaction. It's, the Regulation A is simply designed for small companies that wants to issue securities quick and at low cost because they're small securities, they're small companies. You don't want to put a lot of burden on them. So they need to file something called the offering statement. Think of it as a registration statement, but it's called the offering statement. It will include disclosures to be approved by the SEC. And each potential buyer would receive offering circular. Notice different language. Think of a prospectus. Okay, just different language. You don't have to know what's specifically inside of it, but think like what would be the prospectus equivalent of a prospectus. Okay, issuer must file financial statements for the past two complete physical year. And remember, the bad actors rule apply. If you have someone, an officer, uh, a CEO, the CFO is a bad actor, then forget about regulation A. They will not allow you to go through it. Under Regulation A, we have two tier or two categories, Tier 1 and Tier 2, depending on the amount that you're raising. Under Tier 1, you could raise up to $20 million. You could sell to anyone, accredited and non-accredited investor, and all what you need is reviewed financial statements, not audited financial statements. And you don't have to constantly report your quarterly, semi-annual, or annual reporting. So no ongoing uh, reporting requirements. Under Tier 2, if you want to raise more than 20 but less than $50 million, you will go under tier two for non-accredited investors they are limited to 10 percent of the greater of their net income or net worth so they cannot invest everything with you if it's unaccredited un entities like companies they are limited to 10 percent of their revenues or their assets whichever is greater now you have to have audited financial statements notice here reviews here you have to audit financial statements and you have to have ongoing reporting requirements annual semi-annual you know, press releases, so on and so forth. So notice under tier two, you have a little bit more to do, but you can raise more money and still be exempt under the Securities Act of 1933. At the end of this recording, again, I'm going to remind you, if you are studying for your CPA exam, I can be an alternative, a support system for you, not a substitute, an alternative to your CPA review course. I set up your, my CPA review course very similar to yours, so it will be easy for you to switch back and forth. Stay safe, good luck, and study hard.